Now it's time to talk about the air management system. At first glance, you may think we have twin turbochargers. They're not truly twins. This is sequential turbocharger. There's a low pressure and a high pressure turbocharger working in series. We're going to have this standard actuator to control boost pressure like we did before. And we're going to use an air charge cooler to reduce the temperature of the air before we put it into the intake manifold to achieve maximum efficiency. We have a similar air filter and air minder that's going to be utilized to clean the air and also to notify if we have problems with the air cleaner. And we have an EGR designed to reduce emissions, slightly different cooler, working very similar. These are the parts we talk about. The air filter, filter minder, that's pretty standard. Sequential turbocharger, that's brand new. Air charge cooler, it's the same. EGR is similar with different things. Intake manifold is also similar. Let's get down to looking at this hard stuff, this sequential turbocharger. On the left is a low pressure, low volume turbocharger. In the middle is a high pressure, large turbocharger. Now let's talk about turbochargers for a moment. When I have exhaust flow, the red line coming through both turbochargers, that exhaust flow will speed up a small turbocharger and drive it much easier than it can drive a large one. A large one just has too much mass. So the small one will spool up faster than the large one. Let's take that spooled up one on the bottom, on the left, and bring some air in the bottom. The blue line comes through the low, price, low pressure turbocharger into the larger turbocharger, and then through there and back out into the intake manifold. The reason for this is we have a good low speed turbocharger that spools up quickly, and it gives us extra boost. We get to higher power because then we can't handle enough air with a small one. The large one can handle the air volume. So we get the best of both worlds. Small, quickly spooled up, large, high volume, working in series. They combine together to give us our total turbocharger output. So this is our system. Here's an example of our exhaust flow. You can tell where it comes in to the, and goes out. You can see from the heat where it's going. And you can see across the top where the air comes across going out. There's our air flow. And uh, here's a map of what's happening. Looks a little more complicated than before, but we all looked at that before. Let's get into talking about some stuff. We come in through our air filter and our mass airflow. Then we come around through our low pressure, low volume turbocharger. And then we come into our high pressure turbocharger, which is sucking in fresh air and we send it right on out and we go on to the air cooler. So we've got both things going. We got all the turbochargers working together. Here's our sign. We've got a dirty air filter. There's our air filter box there on our left. Very much like we've had in the four. We have a monitor like we did before. We'll warn us, the operator, if we have a restricted air filter. So now let's talk about this mass airflow sensor. It's mounted here in this harness. You can barely see it, but it is there just down to the bottom left. It's going to be used to help us with the EGR. And here's some more of the plumbing for those turbochargers. We've got to tell you some stuff about some things there. Let's talk about this. When the veins of the turbocharger close, the engine will have higher exhaust back pressure. And it will create more heat, which will warm the engine faster in cold ambient temperatures. There's an oxidation catalyst in the ex exhaust pipe of the EGR system that will be utilized to crack hydrocarbons before they enter the EGR system and hopefully even burn up a little bit of our carbon or soot whatever you want to call it. Now the actuator for the turbocharger is a stepper motor design rather than oil pressure design we had before. The variable vanes are controlled by the turbocharger actuator and the control arm connects to the pivot shaft which connects to the unison ring we showed you before that moves all of the vanes. So here's all of our stuff in our turbocharger. There's our actuator. Looks very much like we had before. And here is what we have. It's a stepper motor now on the right instead of the oil driven uh, actuator we had before. So we don't use oil to move this. We're going to move this open and closing the veins as we've talked about. Works very similar. Only the difference is we're going to have to do more. There's a pattern we've observed for some common reasons for a turbo failing right after repair. The oil supply line on this turbo has a special banjo bolt. The wrong banjo bolt that sometimes gets put in, 
has two feed holes. The good one has four feed holes. If the turbo doesn't get enough oil and starves for oil, the bearings will go bad and you'll have a sudden turbo failure after another repair. This banjo bolt right here has to have four ports on it. If you put a banjo bolt in with only two, the turbos will not get enough oil flow and you'll have turbo damage. 